Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Football Manager 2022 as we continue our Journeyman a Glory Hunter run with uh, Newcastle United in the English Premier League. And we're coming back a bit earlier than I expected uh, because we got the first game of the Euro Cup group stage today. And I wanted to uh, kind of show that off and see if we can get off to a strong start in that as well. We've also done a couple transfers right before deadline day. Let's get into the episode. All right, here we are. Here's our schedule. As you can see, we've only played two games since the last episode. Both of them very dominant wins. Uh, and today we're playing our first game of the Euro Cup here. Uh, we have AAB. However, I don't know how to say their full name. Alberg Boldspick Club? Boldspick Club? Sure. Uh, they're a team from Denmark, I believe. And uh, I don't know anything about them. Our scouts didn't really know anything about them. Hopefully a good start to this game, uh, this season, though. Ho hopefully a good win. Uh, they, they've said in the uh, the news report or whatever that we we got an easy group. So it looks pretty easy uh, because it looks like our only challenge is actually going to be Feyenoord here. And uh, they're currently third in the uh, uh, Holland League, the Holland uh, Erie Division. Or Divisie? Erie Divisie? Probably what? First Division? Something like that. Um, so they're, they're probably going to be a pretty decent team and our big, biggest challenge here. And then we have Sarajevo from uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Herzegovina. How do you say that? Bosnia and Herzegovina. Herzegovina? Sure. We'll go with it. Uh, again, another team that I don't think our scouts know anything about. So if our scouts don't know anything about them, they're probably pretty low, right? And uh, so again, I think our only challenge here is the Feyenoord uh, overall, which should mean that we should get out of this group. Even if somehow they beat us, I don't think the other two teams will. So we should get out of this group, but hopefully we get out of it in a first place. Um as far as the games we played, we did beat uh, West Ham 4-1 to one with a hat trick from Isak and a goal from Luka. Good stuff from them. Uh, we then did a, quite a bit of rotation for Burnley. We rotated about four or five players uh, to our subs, or our backups, and still beat them 7 to nothing, um, which was pretty crazy. Uh, granted, it is Burnley, but uh, I thought that, was, that bode pretty well for things. I should probably show you guys the transfers before I get into this, because I think there might be some guys in this game that you're like, who is that? So let's go look at the transfers real quick. A um, couple transfers. The first one would be, let me get my head out of the way. Uh, transfers out. Uh, we did end up transferring out to pay. He went out for 4.7 mil to PSG. Uh, we also transferred out Ramiro, who was our goalkeeper, our backup goalkeeper. Truth be told, 23 million bucks for him. I couldn't pass that up for a guy that's 34 years old. I don't think we're getting anything better for him ever. So 24 million bucks to get him out. I did mean we have to get another goalkeeper in, and we'll show you that here in just a minute. Uh, just somebody that's the backup. That's really all we need. Uh, we then have Singo did leave. He really wanted to leave, and I really can't afford any more unhappiness uh, with me as a manager or just team of cohesion, anything like that. So I went ahead and let him leave. It was a bit of a gamble. I I, I did have somebody I was going to bring in that was just going to be outstanding and definitely a huge step up from Singo. That unfortunately fell through. I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, we did get 57 mil for Singo, which I thought was a pretty good price. He went to enter. Uh, so who knows? If we ever go to enter, we might be able to play with him again at some point, as well as Kluivert. Uh, and then we did uh, loan out Diadu uh, to Middlesbrough just for a bit of fee, so helps out a little bit. Uh, as far as coming in to the team, uh, we do have five, one, two, three, five, five new players. Two of them loans, because I was like, you know what? We've got a couple extra spots for English players. If we can get some guys that were trained in England, let's go see what we can get. Uh, so we got Jack Mellum here. Uh, he comes in just a two and a half star. Could go, I mean, could go higher, but probably not while we have him. So two and a half star, just really just a guy that can play as a backup uh, because we have the opening because we didn't have that many English players. And I was like, you know what? Let's get, bring him in here. Plus the fact that he's under 20 means we don't have to re um, register him anyway, to be fair. But just getting some more guys in here that are at least two star ability. That was what I was looking for. At least two star current ability that could come in emergency sub if we absolutely needed him to. Um, and who knows from there. Uh, so he came in here. Uh, then we got Daniel Fuentes in here from Man City. Another guy that's right at two stars. Can play on the left-hand side over here. Uh, just gives us a little bit more depth on defensive on the left. Again, we had the spot available. He comes in as an impact sub. Why not? Um, as far as actual players we're bringing in, uh, Edward Amendi comes in here. He's 37 years old. He comes in as just a okay goalkeeper, just to play as a substitute if we need him. Hopefully he doesn't come to that. But uh, trading out uh, our other backup for... What, $23 million, million and bring somebody in for $375,000? 
seemed like a pretty fair trade, especially since they're just going to be sitting on the bench pretty much the whole time. Hopefully. Um, we then have two more guys coming in here. Uh, Evanelson comes in here to replace Depay effectively. So we did obviously play quite a bit for him. He comes in here as a striker that can also play on the left-hand side. Uh, Three-star, just solid player, 29 years old. He's already at his basically at his, in his peak moment right now. He's been playing very well for, I think, uh, Barcelona? No, FC Porto. I think the other guy's Barcelona. Um, so FC Porto, I mean, obviously, just really, really get great ratings overall. So we'll see what he can do. And uh, most likely going to be playing primarily backup. But with as many games as we are expecting to play by being in the Euros and maybe staying in the FA Cup as long as we can, we're going to need some rotation. And so I think he comes in here as a good, solid player, as a rotation player. 45 million up front could go up to 54 million based on how many games he ends up playing. I don't know. I mean, it seemed like a fairly solid pickup for us. And then Livermento comes in here. He's basically our Singo replacement. Not the player I wanted. Not the player I wanted. But he is a solid three-star player, 26 years old. He can play all up and down this right-hand side. He can also play all up across the back. So he does have some uh, flexibility, which is good. Uh, the other good thing for Livermento, which is why I was okay with playing a little bit more for him than I might have wanted to pay for him, because he comes in here as an English player, uh, which again counts towards having players uh, in England, from England. Uh, he came in from Southampton. He's played very well for Southampton. Honestly, Premier League, if you can play that well in the Premier League, I think he's going to do just fine for us. The only negative for him is that he doesn't really like to be an inverted wing back, which is what we're playing them primarily as. But I think he's got a good enough player that he'll figure it out. And I don't I don't have any intention of changing that right now. So we'll see what happens with him. 52 million up front could go up to 69 million. Uh, the player that I really wanted, and we had an agreed deal for him. Um, yeah, Harry Kane coming up. Actually, I mean, he's 36 years old, but it is Harry Kane. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll scout him real quick. Uh, let me just click through these real quick and see if there's anybody here that jumps out at me. Obviously, we don't have another transfer window right now, but you never know when the next one comes around. The player I really wanted was Juan here from Hertha Berlin. Uh, he comes in. He would be 22 years old. He had an $83 million release clause, and I, I had it. I was going to pay 83 million bucks for him. I had 83 million bucks in our in our uh, transfer budget. That was before I got the other two players, right? And I was like, you know what? He's going to be. A, he would be a great player to bring in here. Uh, he'd be just an outstanding right back, world class. I mean, player, 22 years old, lots of potential to continue to get better, even. And 83 million dollars we had it agreed for. Uh, he had him agree for the the price of the um, the salary and everything. But before it got, finally got all said and done, he decided to renew his contract with Eartha Berlin. Eartha? Eartha? Whatever. Um, and as you can see, the the release clause went up to $100 million now. But uh, it makes, which makes sense because they're playing in uh, Champions League and uh, he wanted to play in the Champions League. I get it. Understandable. Would have been really, really nice to bring him in here, though. Uh, just was not meant to be. All right. So that's the team. Back to the schedule. Because a couple of these guys featured in this game. Livermento was in this game. We had um, Evanelson in this game. And, of course, Lara was... Uh, we already know about Lara, though. But, uh, like I said, a few backups. Uh, Sancho came in here. Perfect 10. Uh, had a pair of goals from Sancho. Vieira got a goal. Palmer got a goal. Good to see him picking up something. And then Lara, he came in off the bench. He came in at the... I think I brought him in at halftime, actually. I played... Um, um, who did I play? for the first? Luca, I think, for the first half. And then I brought Lara in for the second half. And he comes in here and picks up a hat trick. We didn't need it, <laughs> but he got it. So uh, good to see him picking up some goals and continuing his development. All right. All of that said and done, let's get into to get today's game. We are going to be playing, hopefully, primarily our starters. I do have everybody set. Yes, I do. Uh, other than Livermento, who's obviously the new guy uh, coming in here. So we got Conde and Go. Lamptey on the left. Uh, Liver Livermento on the right-hand side. Again, only showing two-star, but we know he's a better player than that. Uh, he just doesn't like to be an inverted wingback. We'll see how he plays. He played okay in the last game. Of course, that was an easy game. We'll see how he can plays and uh, see if we can keep him in there as an inverted wingback. Uh, Kambola and Levi, of course, in the central defender roles. Kudos or Kudus and Vieira in the midfield. Baldwin and Sancho on the wings. Baldwin also wanted to leave. We just didn't get a good offer for him. He's still happy for the moment. He's like, you know what? I understand a good offer didn't come in for me. Maybe next you know, time. Uh, so we'll see if he can get something for him at some point, if he really, really wants to go. I don't want him to go, but I also don't want to keep people around that are going to be grumpy. So that's, that's kind of where I'm looking. And then of course, Isak and Luca in the striker roles, both on a, both of them on four goals apiece and with uh, Lara catching up pretty quickly with that one game. But let's get into this. This really needs to be a dominant game to really set the, the tempo for how our Euro Cup, um, kind of run is going to go, to be honest. 
Now, granted, once we get out of the group stages, it will get, you know, a step up more challenging. But, uh, we gotta get out of the group stages first. Just because this is an easy team, just because we're in an easy group, at the end of the day, doesn't mean anything if the guys don't show up. Come on, guys. Let's get off to a really strong start. All right, getting a first highlight already one minute, 22 seconds into the game. There's Sancho with the ball. Back to Livermento. Livermento gets it up to Isak. Oh, doesn't quite get able to get it to him, unfortunately. Good effort overall, but there's Kambula picking up the ball, pushing it back up. Up to Luca. Luca over to Sancho. Sancho has been playing so well for us so far. There's Luca. Oh, buddy. Come on, buddy. You got you to gotta score those, my friend. It's a breezy 50 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty cool. Sancho. Where's Luca? I thought that was actually going in from the angle. All right. Got a throw in coming in from Levi into Vieira. Vieira back to Livermento. Over to Lamptey. There's Kudos with the ball. Back to Livermento. Gets it up to... Tries to get up there. He's tried that twice now. Not been able to get it up there quite well. I mean, even though he's playing as an inverted wing back, I would think that a player of his caliber could make that pass a little bit easier than he's making it. Maybe he'll get one later. So Sancho up to Luca. Luca gets crowded out. I mean, good good defense there. Levi now with the ball. Back up to Luca. There's Livermento. Oh, gets tripped up. It's going to be a penalty. I mean, it should. I mean, he got tripped up pretty hard. Uh, who takes our penalties? Luca? Vieira? Sancho? I actually don't remember. <laughs> we'll find out. I'm trying to remember who it was. It is number nine. That is Isak. Yeah. Good way to start the game, uh, the game, guys. Good stuff. All right. But we really need to be winning this game, I think, four to nothing at the minimum. If this team is as good as I think they are against a team that is... You know, just not of our caliber. I think four to nothing is the minimum. All right, here's a free kick coming across. Vieira gets across. Nobody's there, unfortunately. Isak's going to be able to chase that one down. Turns around, gets it deflected, but it gets picked back up. Gets it across. There's Baldwin. There we go. Easy goal from Baldwin. I mean, it looked like it might have gotten saved because it was a little bit slow, but it was just enough and it was on target. So that works. I really need Baldwin to have a good season because if he has a really good season, but he still wants to leave, then that, I mean, that's going to be our best way to get some, some really good money for him, right? I mean, we need his value to go to skyrocket because if he's determined to leave, then, you know, we want it to be worth as much as possible. I know that sounds logical, but I just, it's like, I'm just reiterating we're going to cheer on Baldwin every chance we can get because he might not be sticking around and we want we want money for him. Although the more he better he plays, the less I'm going to want him to leave. We'll see. There's Levi with the ball over to Livermento. Really want to see some good play from Livermento because we paid quite a bit of money for him. There's a cross. Oh, Lucas is there. Not able to get on that one. Again, just a missed opportunity from Livermento, I feel like. I mean, if, if maybe he's playing well defensively, but his offensive... There we go. Baldwin, another goal. His offensive so far, i just not impressed yet. But, I mean, as of right now, his rating is better than Lamptey's for whatever, you know, that means. No, I wasn't trying to show you, my friend. Come on, guys. I mean, I said I want to win by four goals. We don't need those four goals in the first half. I mean, if you want to get them, that's fine. But it's not. that wasn't part of the requirements. Just kudos over to Livermento. Set up to Sancho on the right-hand side. Luca. Ooh. I think it was offside, though, wasn't it? No? Maybe? That works are good. It looked close. It looked a little bit close. But yeah. I guess he, if Luca was past him, then it was still okay. Uh, or not Luca. If Sancho was further in than him, then it still counts, right? 
Yeah, no, he's, he's way, way on sides. I was looking at where he was at relative to the players around him. I was not thinking about where he was at relative to the player that was sitting on Sancho. So far, playing really well, guys. Now, I will need to start resting some players in the second half. Um, like key players, because we do have another game coming up in like three days. Um, and again, I'm, I'm deprioritizing the league a little bit, but we're doing pretty good in the league. So as long as we're doing good in the league, I will continue to try and make it as high a priority as I can. If we start slipping up in the league, then I definitely will deprioritize it pretty heavily because I cannot risk the Euro, um, run for the league if we're not going to do well in the league in the end. But if we're still in there, yeah, we'll do the best we can with, with whatever rotation we've got to do. There's Vieira with the ball. Gets it across to uh, Baldwin. Almost had a chance. I thought he thought he was... I mean, if he got it to him, I think Baldwin scores there. But a uh, good defensive play there. Corner kick coming across. Vieira. There's Luca. Oh, that should have gone in. Right off the corner there. And that is halftime. Four to nothing in the first half. I mean, exactly what we want to see. Um, honestly, I'm probably going to go ahead and sub a guy out now. Who is one of my key players that I want to keep? Uh, probably Vieira. Vieira's a little bit tired right now. And we need him to be in tip-top shape. So we'll bring Iglesias in here. Probably do another sub at the 60-minute mark. Uh, then probably one around 75 minutes. Just, just, every, just all three subs a little bit earlier than I normally do them. Just to try and get some of these guys a little bit of rest. I'm okay with leaving Livermento in there because we do have other players that can play on that right-hand side. I mean, he might be the best player, but I don't think the other players are bad, necessarily. Um, so we'll see what he, we can do, um, leaving him in there a bit longer. Really just want to get our key players, which are Vieira, uh, either Luca or Isak, whichever one of them looks like they're getting tired faster, and then probably one of our two central defenders, Levi, Kambola, are probably our three subs, unless something else happens. So we need to get get our, you know, our, our core rested for the next game. Oh, should have scored that one, buddy. Should have scored that one. All right, 60 minute mark. Let's get. Looks like Kambola is the most tired of everybody that I was talking about. So we'll get him out of there for Daviv, which is honestly, I mean, Kambola is a better player, but Daviv is not a bad player. When you've got good players on your bench, that feels really good. You can just, you know, you're not going to suffer too much. And then we'll bring Luca out here now. And we'll bring uh, probably Lara back in. I mean, he's played so well. I mean, there's a Vanelson, but I want to see Lara continue to do what he does. I mean, he's played really well. Continue to get him some time just to get him some development. Now, if the game was close, I'd bring in Vanelson in, but since the game is not close, Lara comes in here to continue to develop, and honestly, he may end up being, I think he will be end up being the better player. I don't know, he might not be quite there yet, but he's definitely shown that he can play at this level. I mean, was he the one that scored like a couple goals against like Man United or Man City or something like that end of last season or Chelsea? One of those top teams. I mean, he, he He's played well. We've seen good stuff from him. Oh, thank you for saving that. We really, I mean, it doesn't matter, but giving up a goal just does not feel good right now, guys. Come on. Feyenoord, 7-1 over Sarajevo. They're going to be a tough team, I think. If they can if they can put up seven against a team that I would expect to be probably about the same level as AAB here, that may mean that they're they're playing a little bit better than us. Although I'm not really, I mean, I could have put, kept the gas on, keep all my star players in there, but all right, cool. All right, there we go, guys. Four to nothing. Good start to the Euros. A really good start to the Euros, to be honest. Um, pretty happy with that. I mean, Feyenoord is in the lead right now because of goal differential. We can obviously change that by playing them and beating them, hopefully. All right, next game up is in three days. It is against Norwich here, um, so we'll be right back. All right, we're back for game number two. Uh, same team as last time. Um, no changes at the moment. Uh, we do have another game coming up in a couple days, but it's the Carabao Cup, and I'm probably going to play pretty heavy rotation in that game because I don't really care. Um, I mean, it would be nice to win some hardware. I'm not going to lie. 
But other than that, I don't really care. I said same thing. I'm sorry. I just realized Sutrix in here instead of Viera. But uh, I'm sorry. There's Viera. I asked my coach to put people in here, but I thought he was putting people in the same spot. So I didn't. I just didn't think anything of it. Do I want to change this up? Um. Nah, let's we'll play this. I think this is fine. It'll be fun to play some some guys moving around a little bit. So Vera comes in on the left. Suchi comes in there. Badwin sits on the bench. Works for me, honestly. I don't have any particular reason to to say no to this particular lineup. So my assistant coach, good job, assistant coach. I mean, I've been making a few changes. Uh, I did swap my strikers around. He keeps wanting to put the Isak on the right and um, Luca on the left. I still think Isak is better on the left because. He can, he's got, you know, better left foot side of this, but maybe, maybe my assistant coach knows something. I don't know. Who knows? All right, let's get into this game. We've got to get a good win here against Norwich. If we get a good win against Norwich, then I don't know if you guys saw, I didn't really harp on it because we're still so early in the season. It doesn't really mean that much, but going into that last game, the Euro Cup game, we were in first place. Um, we're not right now in third place because we have a game in hand. We haven't played it yet. Um, but if we win this one, we'll go back up to first. What does that mean? Five games in? Not not a lot, in my opinion. Uh, I think the more, more telling note would be less the, the fact that we're in first place if we win this game. No, that looked... It had to have been close. I thought it looked good. But anyway, the more telling thing would be less uh, the, the first place part and more the... Yeah, there we go. The, um, the fact that we've got a 17 goal differential. 18 now, if this, this, this result holds. So... 18 goal differential in the first five games means a lot more to me than the fact that we're in first place in the first five games. Now, obviously, if you've got an 18 goal differential, you're probably first place is kind of, I guess, how that goes. But uh, I definitely think if we can hold on to that, that pattern of that goal differential, that bodes really, really well for the rest of the season. Oh, no, Sancho, buddy. I uh, can't be risking Sancho. It says he can shake it off. All right, I'm going to give you a couple more minutes just to see, but we will get you out at halftime. Can't be can't be losing Sancho. He has played really, really well for us so far. I mean, at the end of the day, are, are the guys that I've been bringing in worth the money? I think a lot of them are worth a lot of good money. I mean, I think they're worth a lot of money. Are they worth the money I'm paying for them? I don't know. Um... What I do think, though, is that if we can pay that much for them, win games, and still not completely kill the bank, which we're borderline right now, um, then I think that's I think they are worth it at that point, right? If you can keep your 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 finances in a good place, right now our finances are not in a great place. We are projected to lose money year over year, um, but. We're in, I think we've got a couple players that if they decide to move on, we could sell on to get some profit back. And I think we've got some, we've got a solid team overall. So I don't know that we, if we were, if we we're going to have the transfer window for next year right now, I don't know that we spend all the money at that point because we just don't need as much anymore. I mean, I think we get like one or two key players and that's it. Casual extra goal from Levi here. Yes, I'm sitting here talking. I'm pretty happy with the team overall. Um, Isak and Luca definitely for sure, no problems there. Sancho on the right, and Baldwin on the left. I mean, maybe one of those guys could 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 get a level up from from another player, but um, Vieira. I mean, as long as we can keep him, keep him healthy. I mean, he's going to be an excellent player for us. I mean, there's no reason to swap out Vieira. Maybe one of the other midfielders could could arguably be swapped up for a slightly better player. I think Kambula and Levi in the midfield or in central defender roles, solid. Uh, wings, maybe, maybe something, somebody there. So I think there's a couple spots that if we got another $200 million worth of transfer right the second, I might consider wanting to swap around, but, um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the team on a whole, to be fair. All right, let's do a sub here. I forgot to get Sancho out at halftime because I'm sitting there blabbing my mouth <laughs> and talking. Uh, we'll bring Cole Palmer in. That's fine. Give him some game time. Anybody else I want to swap out right now? I don't think so we'll go we're okay i should have swapped to central out earlier i hope that didn't hurt him too much all right there we go i mean it didn't register as an actual injury but uh, you know we'll see when we actually get in there 
We're gonna get Livermento out here. Um, guess we'll bring Lamptey across because we can bring I think Bello in here. Oh, we got Gutierrez. Actually, we can play Gutierrez. Let's see what Gutierrez can do. He's been injured. I haven't had a chance to play him. And then everybody else is playing well, so there's been no reason to play him. Only two goals against Norwich. I mean, it is an away game, but I would have liked to have seen a slightly better end result, I think. Come on, guys. Don't give him one up here. Good defense from the boys there. Again, if you can if you can defend it without even get to your goalkeeper, that is really good stuff. Now the goalkeeper still had a dive, which made me a little scared because I'm like, oh, we didn't have to dive because we had it. And I thought he was going to be out of position, but thankfully, we we're okay. Come on. Oh, they did get one. Boo! There goes y'all's uh, bonus, guys. Let's not give up another one, though. We can't We can't be drawing a game like this. We've, we've completely dominated them. Absolutely dominated Norwich. There's no excuse to lose this game or draw this game. I haven't been turning on time-wasting because, well, we've been up like three or four goals, usually. Um, I might as well... I might turn on a little bit right now. I don't know if I want to turn on... You know, we'll go full kind of scary sometimes to do that but uh yeah we should be i mean we should ugh, don't don't let him get it back in disguise come on let's just sit on the ball for a bit there's kudos suchik with the ball over to lamptey we don't need anything here guys just just play safe just play keep away there's bad one over to there's bad one again so close Again, we just got to play keepaway, guys. Five minutes of extra time. Ouch. That is a lot of time. All right, we just burned about 15, 20 seconds there. So that's a good start. Come on, guys. Pretty sure that went out of bounds. That should have been a corner kick, but maybe it was just barely, barely in. All right, we skated past that one. Should have been two nothing at the worst, but we gave him one. Um. All right. Uh, I don't. I don't know why our ref, our assistant coach. I thought maybe he knew something. I didn't know. I thought that was a wrong statement. That's all right. The guys are still going to be happy about winning the game. All right. We are back in first place. Barely. That that goal they got back really, really hurt a lot. But we're up there with Arsenal. I can't believe Arsenal. Arsenal. You bring in Jurgen Klopp and Arsenal is like just suddenly just been so incredibly dominant. I mean, they didn't win last year, but they looked really good and they're already looking really good this year. So crazy stuff. Six in a row. Good start, guys. All right, we'll be back for... Uh, well, I guess that's the end of the episode, actually. What am I saying? Uh, the next time we come back will be for Feyenoord and Chelsea. Should be a pair of really, really good games for us. Both really tough teams. Uh, the toughest team we're going to be playing in the Euro Cup, for sure. Or the Euro Cup group stage, for sure. Uh, and then we'll see how good Chelsea is this year. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.